Hello friends, this video on lines and angles part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So as I said, line segment, line, ray, angle, these are the basics of geometry. And definitely not to forget the most basic element that is a point. So let's start with the point. So point is the most fundamental object of geometry with no length, width or height. So it has no dimension less. It, it has no dimension basically. They, you, you just cannot measure its length or breadth or height. So it is represented by a dot. The, you take a pencil and touch the tip of the pencil on a white sheet of paper. What do you get on that sheet of paper? You see a black dot. So that dot represents a point. So think of a tip of a pencil or the tip of the compass. So these represent dots. In fact, there are certain things in nature where you can visualize dots. For example, you are uh, in an aeroplane. Now, when the flight lands, just before it lands, when you look at a, a city, let's say that you are traveling to New Delhi. Okay. Now, the moment, the, the, a couple of minutes before it, the flight is going to land on New Delhi, and when you try to look from the window of the flight, what do you see? You tend to see you, everything on the streets of that city seems like points. So the well-lit roads or the well-lit vehicles, everything, the huge vehicles also they appear to be points. So when you look at, look at it from a very far distance, all the things, whether it is a vehicle or it is a street light or it is a building, all of them appears as dots. So these are points. Similarly, when you look at a star-studded sky at night, you, you Do you get to see the exact shape of the stars? No, that's because they are very far away from us. So we do see them twinkling, but when you look at them, you they appear to be like dots. They appear as points. That's because we are looking at them from a very far distance. So this is point. The next one is line. So line is a combination of points that extend indefinitely in both directions. So it will tend to continue infinitely in both directions. This is important about line. So it is nothing but a lot of points put together one after another such that it extends in both direction infinitely. So that's a line. So when you think of line, you can think of the railway lines, the railway track. So, you know, it kind of extends infinitely. We do not know till where it extends. So, so that's an example of line. So, a straight line is often represented like this with arrow on both the ends, which shows that they are extending in both directions. Now, it is not necessary that line always has to be a straight line. It can be a curved line as well. Because in the definition, nowhere we say that the point should form a straight line. So it is just a combination of points such that it extends in both directions. So even in case of a curved line, it can extend in both directions and it is still a combination of points. Therefore, it is also a line. Now, but many a times people feel that if we talk about line, we are basically talking about a straight line, but that's really not necessary. It can be a straight line. It can also be a curved line. A line is normally represented, let's say that it's st the straight line is named as AB. So how do we represent the straight line? We write it as AB and over AB we give this symbol which shows that this is a line. Next is line segment. So line segment as the name suggests, it is a segment of the line. It is a part of a line with fixed end points because in case of line it in end, it doesn't have any end point because on both the ends it is extending infinitely. So there is no end point. But when you talk about a line segment, it is a part of that same line, but it has fixed end points. So let's say that this is a straight line as we see, right? It is extending in both directions. Now, if we consider two fixed points, A and B, so this AB, AB is a portion of this straight line but this AB has two fixed endpoints, A and B. So AB is a line segment. So that's line segment. Now it, let, let's think of this um, game, which you, I'm sure you would have played uh, with your friends. Now what happens in this 
game. You have two teams and both the teams, they try to pull the rope in their own direction, right? Now, when you look at this long rope, it, it's like very long, right? But when you look at a portion of this rope, maybe only from this part to this part, what is this? This, this portion is nothing but a line segment because it is part of that big rope, right? So that means it is a line segment. So line segment is basically part of a line which has fixed endpoints. Let us look at some examples of line segments from our day-to-day -day life. When you look at the ruler or the scale, it, it's a line segment because it has a fixed length. So you know its endpoints. You think of the rope you tie between two pillars in order to dry your clothes. So here also, you know, it is a fixed length. You know the end points. So these are the two end points. Therefore, this is also a line segment. You think of your uh, textbook or your notebook where you have these lines. So those lines also have end points. So that's line segment. One simple exercise that you can do anytime is you take a sheet of paper, just fold it and then, you know, try to straighten it again. What do you see? You see that a line is formed here like this, like how you see here. So this shows a folded paper. So when you fold a piece of paper, a line is formed along those folds. So that's also a line segment because it has fixed end points. So these all, the, again, the ladder that you see on the screen here also, each part, is each segment is a line segment because they have their fixed end points. So these are all examples of line segments from our day-to-day -day life. So I guess that now when you look at, at things around you, you'll be able to um, find out where do you see line segments. Next is array. It is a part of a line with fixed starting point and extending endlessly. So let's now talk about ray. So ray is also a part of a line just like line segment but in this case it has only one fixed starting point and it extends endlessly on the other side. That means only one fixed point. So when you represent a ray it is something like this. This end is fixed but this end extends infinitely. So it is like an intermediate between line and line segment. So line extends in both directions, line segment, both fixed points, ray, one fixed point and one side extending infinitely. So the example of ray would be the sun rays, the light coming from the sun. So since the source is fixed, therefore one end is fixed, but the other end, it reaches infinitely to any place. Similarly, the light coming out of the torch, that also is an example of a ray because you have one end fixed, which is the torch and the other end is reaching out infinitely. Now the next geometrical element we will talk about is angle. Now what do you see on the screen? You see a, a box which is initially closed and then which is gradually getting opened and then it is totally opened. So how does this relate to angle? Of course it does because angle is nothing but measure of orientation between two rays with a common end point. Now here do you see any sort of orientation in these diagrams? So when you look at it initially you see that the lead is closed. So the lead and the box they were like oriented along each other. So that's when it was closed. In the next scenario you see when you gradually start opening it there is some sort of orientation between these two rays. This is one ray, this is another ray and this orientation is nothing but angle. And if you look at it, this ray and this ray, both of these has a common end point. Similarly, as the box is totally opened, the angle increased all the more. So basically what angle is? Angle is a measurement in degrees, which just tells us how much is the orientation between two rays. So let us look at it diagrammatically. Now in the first scenario, what happens is both the rays are lying along each other. So the angle is zero degree. In the second case, there is some sort of orientation between the two surfaces. So here the angle is, let us assume that the angle is say 60 degrees. In the third case, you see it has opened all the more. So the angle has increased. So let's say that the value now is 120 degrees. So what is happening? As the box is gradually opening, the angle is also 
increasing. So this angle, this is what angle is. Angle is about orientation between two rays, right? And this is how we represent angle in the diagram. So it is represented by two rays such that they have a common endpoint. Only if they have a common endpoint, they can form an angle. Otherwise, let's say you have one ray like this and another ray like this. So there is no common endpoint. So obviously there can be no orientation between the two. So when you talk about the parts of an angle, so an angle consists of the sides or arms of the angle. So these are the arms. This is one arm and this is another arm. So these are the arms or sides of the angle and this common point is called the vertex. So once we have had a quick recap on the basics. Let us now talk about related angles. Now, related angles, what do you see on the screen? You see the picture of this puzzle, which says that the two puzzles are such that they exactly fit into each other. So similarly, we will talk about angles which are in some or the other way related to each other. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.